E aí galera, tudo bem? Estamos de novo aqui no DCS World H64D, H64D. Pois é, senhor, já estamos no mês de março, hoje é 12, sábado. Adivinha o que, que eu achei aqui no fórum? Tava olhando aqui e o senhor é, produtor de vídeos do DCS, o produtor sênior do DCS, o Matt Egner, <risos> é ele, ele é o cara desse mês. Postou outro vídeo aqui do H64. O cara tá trabalhando agora até no sábado. <risos> o senhor Matt Egner agora tá postando vídeo até no sábado. A coisa lá tá assim, né? Os caras tá colocando fogo na fornalha. Vamos ver se o trem sai até no final desse mês. Deixa eu correr aqui, pessoal. Porque eu tava dando uma, uma olhadinha rapidinha no vídeo dele e, e acredita, ele não deixou a, a legenda habilitada. Eu não sei se é por causa do horário que o vídeo está sendo ripado ou porque ele não configurou isso. Mas aqui é negócio, vou ter de postar o vídeo dele, pessoal. Não tem jeito, não. Deixa eu ver aqui no fórum, DCS. Eu tô correndo porque o vídeo dele, se não me engano, tem 30 minutos, pessoal. Aí quebra minha internet aqui, ó. Não, 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 não. Tá aqui, ó. É, nesse vídeo, apresen... aprenda como configurar... Aprenda como configurar nossos controles para pilotar o H64D. É, pessoal, o vídeo dele tem 30 minutos. Então eu vou fazer o seguinte, vou, é, vou carregar o vídeo dele aqui. Cadê, cadê, cadê? Vou carregar o vídeo dele porque... Não é aquele esqueminha do jeito que eu estava postando anteriormente, né? O vídeo dele não tem legenda. Por isso vão... vocês vão ter de dar um jeitinho aí, né? <risos> eu acho que o inglês de vocês não é tão ruim assim não, né? Tal, é, a legenda no vídeo dele não está habilitada. Não está habilitada. Desculpa aí. Vai ter de ser no... Na cara, na coragem aqui. Pera aí, deixa eu colocar o vídeo dele aqui. Pera aí, vamos ligar o som. Matt Egner, H64 dele. Está passando um vídeo agora de configuração dos controles. Acompanha aí. Hey, everyone. Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. And in this DCS AH64D video, we're going to take a break from the academics and look at setting up the controls. Now, if you're new to DCS, this can certainly be one of the more intimidating and confusing uh, features. But really, once you get the hang of the basic rules of setting up the controls, it's really super easy. And if you've been around for a while, uh, maybe watching this video, you might learn a couple things. Anyhow, let's get started by first going to the gear icon here at the top and going to the option screen. We're here in the special tab first, and let's select AH64D module. And at the top, we have our customized cockpit. Uh, right now it's the default, but later on we hope to add some different cockpit options, maybe a factory fresh, or maybe a dirty bird, and so on. Uh, below that, we have the tremor modes for both the cyclic and the anti-torque pedals. And for both, we'll have three options. Uh, first, at the top, we'll have the force feedback friendly option for all those hundreds of force feedback sticks out there. At the bottom, we have our joystick without springs. So a lot of sticks you can actually remove the springs from and have the stick act much more accurately to a real cyclic. And of course, in the middle, we have our central position tremor mode. And that really applies to probably about 99.9% .9 of most customers and that they'll be using a stick with a centering spring mechanism. Now, in previous videos, we talked about the uh, force trim release function. So essentially what you're gonna be doing is, and it's kind of like we have in the uh, K50, you'll move your stick and pedals to the desired trim position, and then press and release the force trim release button, and immediately move those controllers back to center. Below that, we have our uh, option for the lockout. We can either have it based on the finger trips, uh, fingertips, lifts being released or automatically you have them jump over. Below that we have the factor of camera shake of you know, just the standard shake of a helicopter as well as things like the gun and so on. Next we have the checkbox for the iHads monocle the invisible and as you may have noticed in previous videos uh, sometimes I have the, uh, the visible monocle 
uh, seen, and sometimes I have it hidden. And this is where you would uh, determine that. Below that, we have our IHADS Render Eye, which is uh, in regards to VR, as you might imagine. So of course, in the real world, this is only in reference to the right eye, but there's a lot of users out there who may have a visual impairment in the right eye, or maybe they just you know, really have difficulty uh, seeing the HD through just one eye. So we wanna make this as accessible as possible. So we're gonna have options for the right eye, the left eye, and both eyes. And if you wanna be a purist and just use the right eye, you know, fill your boots, but we wanna make it an option for everybody. Uh, below that, we have our George AI Auto Hover. And that simply means that if you're in a hover in the pilot seat and you move to the CPG seat, that the hover will be maintained and you, until you take control. This can be actually really handy. And below that, of course, we have our pilot and co-pilot options to have the face guard visible or not visible. Next, let's take a look at the controls. Okay, here in the controls tab, let's first go to our module listing. We can see that we have listings for AH64D CPG, George AI Helper, and pilot. Let's first go to George AI Helper. And we'll be talking about this more once we get to the George video, which will be coming soon. As always, we have the actions listed here along the left, and we have the controllers lifted, listed here along the top. So you can see I have a VPC stick and a VPC throttle. Actually, specifically, these are verbal uh, constellation stick and a Verbal CM3 throttle, which are great for the um, H64. Uh, but you know, I do have different uh, HOTAS for different aircraft. And you know, right now is really a golden age of peripherals for flight sims. I can't think of a time in the past where there weren't so many quality options available. And just because I use the Constellation and CM3 throttles does you know, by no means mean that other throttles and sticks would not work equally as well uh, with this product. You know, the key is, you know, having, you know, good accuracy on stick and throttle, you know, lots of buttons and hats and axes, uh, the more the better, anyhow. So to set up a control, it's super simple. So we'll find the control that we want to map. In this case, let's say a George interface down. We'll find the controller, in this case, a throttle. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map my George controller uh, input to a four-way hat switch on my throttle. So we'll follow over to the controller, to this box here. We'll double click on it. And now I'll push the controller uh, hat in the direction I want to map, in this case down. It picks it up as joystick button 18. I hit OK and it's mapped. We'll do the same now for moving to the left. Press the button to the left. Okay, right, push the button to the right, and up, push it up. Now it's all mapped. And we'll come back to uh, George uh, commands in a bit when we get to the pilot and CPGs. Okay, now let's take a look at the pilot commands first. So we'll go to our module list and we'll select AH64D pilot. Before we get too deep, let's take a look at the search function. This is a really handy function that often gets overlooked. So we select search, and here in the bar, we can type in any search uh, word that we'd be looking for as a control input. So let's say I'm interested in APU, so APU, and anything with APU automatically pops up. Uh, again, it's a kind of an overlooked function that's super helpful. Let's go to axes commands first. We can see I actually have a lot of these pre-assigned. And if you have these, you want to you know, get rid of them rather than uh, manually selecting each and hitting clear. What you can do is you can select the controller, any item assigned to that controller in the list, and then hit clear category, hit yes, and it's gone. And we'll do the same thing with the throttle, clear category, gone. Okay, so I should point out that 
everything I'm doing here is just, you know, my personal preference. Uh, there well may be better ways to do it in ways that work best for you. So this isn't so much a case of this is how you need to set up your controls. Uh, this is going to be more of a case of this is how you set up your controls. OK, let's get started. So uh, we have our list for axes commands. I start going through the most important ones. I'm not going to go through every single one naturally, uh, just the ones that you'll probably use most. And I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll understand how to map everything else that you want to map. Yeah, so first we have our collective. And for my throttle, actually it's a split throttle, left and right. So I'm going to assign the right element of that throttle as my collective. So collective is the action. I'm going to assign it to my throttle. So I'll follow this column down, the box here, double click on it. And now I'm simply going to move the right throttle back and forth, and it recognizes it as Joy RY, and I hit OK. That's all you really need to do. Next, we have the cyclic, or the control stick, uh, pitch and roll. And as you might imagine, I'm going to assign that to my stick. So pitch, stick, come down, box here, double click, and move my stick forward, move it back, and it recognizes that joystick Y. I hit OK, roll. Same thing, box here, select, move my stick to the left, move it to the right, and it recognizes it. But let's go ahead and refine this a bit, and we'll go to axis tune, first for the X axis. I generally like to have about a dead zone of two, but you know, based on you know if your joystick or spiking or not, or you know how much slop you want in the front, um, you can adjust this higher. But you can also adjust it either by putting your uh, mouse on it and dragging it, which is rather coarse. Or in this case, if you want really fine control, put your mouse cursor over it and then use the left and right uh, keyboard keys to move it. So just the two. And for the curve, uh, I go eight. But that's because I have a, as we call a short throw joystick mounted on the desk. But if you had a long throw joystick, say something with a big extension on the floor, you could probably get away with zero. Uh, again, it really depends on your controllers at this point. We'll hit OK. Then we'll go to pitch. Dead zone of two. Curve of eight. Now, for uh, some joysticks and throttles, uh, in particular, say like verbal here, uh, the Y axes most often will need to be inverted. So I'm going to press the invert button here. Coming down. So here we have our HOCAS, not HOTAS, for hands-on collective and stick for X and Y axes. So as you may have noticed from uh, videos, you have a cursor that you can move around the different NPDs. And this is going to be your mechanism to do that. So go X axes. And I'm going to assign this to a mini stick on my joystick. So stick here, double click, X axes. So I'm going to move it left and right until it's recognized and OK. And now same thing for the Y axes. Select, up and down for Y, and select. And just like we did before, I'll go to Axis Tune, 2, Curve, again, about 8 works for me. And because this is the Y axis, I'm going to invert it. X axis, Axis Tune, Dead Zone 2, Curve of 8, no invert. And OK. Coming down. So we have our power levers. And if you had a you know a fancy throttle with all sorts of levers on it, you can certainly do left and right. Uh, I just have one more left, so I'm going to do both. And again, I'm going to put it to the uh, left throttle on my throttle quadrant. So both throttle here, double click, and move the left throttle forward and back until it's recognized, and that's good. Coming down, next we have our rudder, or anti-torque pedals. And for me, I have this assigned to the X axis of a mini stick on my throttle. Now, I don't use you know, Super Gucci rudder pedals, 
which have a lot more throw. So because I have much more limited throw, I'm going to have to adjust my axis tune accordingly. But first, let's go ahead and map that. So rudder, throttle, this box here, double click, move it on the X axis, so left and right, recognized. I go to axis tune, two, curve, about eight again. But for me, again, because I have much less uh, room to play with on my x-axis throw, I'm going to reduce this to about 75. But again, if you have uh, rudders, you could probably keep this at 100 and be perfectly happy with it. Come back out. Then we have our wheel brake. And on my stick, I have a axis lever at the base. I want to use that as my brake, so stick. Double click, action, the lever, OK. And finally, the zoom function. So if you're not in VR, uh, having a good zoom axis is really helpful. And what I do is I use the uh, flap lever on the throttle. So zoom, throttle, this button here, double click, forward and back to recognize, OK. And I believe this is another one where I'll go ahead and need to invert it. Okay, so those is the those are the axes commands. Next, let's go ahead and set up the cyclic and collective controls for the pilot because those are going to be the primary controls we'll be using from the back seat. So again, we'll stay in uh, pilot and we'll select collective stick here. Let's clear out the uh, previous assignments. We can do these from scratch. And again, um, these are just my personal uh, favorites that I use most often. And you could spend you know, a long time uh, putting every single one in there. But there's probably you know, a, just a core number of controls that you'll need to have. Uh, first, uh, having the polarity switch in FLIR from white hot to black hot is really handy. So on the uh, left side of my throttle is a two-way button with a depress. Uh, z-axis, I'm going to assign the z-axis to that. So my polarity, throttle, select it, depress it, and assigned. Uh, box, chop, not going to need, search queue, not going to need. So this one here, uh, cursor display select button. This could be pretty handy in that you can slew your cursor between MPDs uh, using the cursor button, or you could uh, map this button and automatically switch it between the two. I personally don't use it, uh, but some others may find it uh, useful. But right below that is our cursor depress button. And this is certainly something you're going to want to do. And that, as you've probably seen in some of the TSD videos, you can slew the cursor over like a, a bezel label or a point or waypoint on the uh, TSD and select it. And that's what we're gonna be using this for. And what I'm gonna be doing is, because I have my uh, MPD slew cursor assigned to a stick, I'm gonna make the cursor enter the Z-axis depress function of that mini stick. So depress function, stick, select, depress, and okay. Coming down. Not gonna have to worry about these for a little while. Then we have our NVS or night vision uh, select switches. These are the two camera options when you're in night uh, vision system. Uh, Pinvis, which the pilot will be using most of the time, uh, but there is an option if you wanted to, you can use the TADS and really piss off your uh, CPG. So for that, I'm gonna also assign it to the throttle on the same button that I assigned uh, the polarity. So I'm going to make my pinvis forward and the tads back. So pinvis, throttle, select, forward on the switch, and tads right below it, and aft. Now those are mapped. Uh, searchlight, uh, don't really use that much. Uh, then we have our site select. Uh, for now, until we add the FCR, you really don't need to do this because you're going to be in HMD you know, all the time. Uh, but we'll come back to this later when the FCR is added. Uh, then we have our uh, 
uh, stabilator. And on the uh, right side and near the bottom, there's a four-way and X, uh, Z axis switch. And that's what I'm gonna do. So the depress, I'm gonna assign as the uh, Z axis depress. And ND for uh, moving the stabilator down. I'm gonna go down on the switch and NU up. I'll go up. And then we have our tailwheel lock unlock. And this is really uh, useful when you're taxing the aircraft to lock or unlock that tailwheel. And again, on the right side of the throttle in the back, there's a push button that I'm gonna assign it to. So tailwheel throttle right here, double click, press that button and okay. Now let's talk about the cyclic. So back to our list, go to cyclic stick. Let's clear out the old assignments. Okay, so at the top of the stick uh, in the real aircraft, there are buttons for the chaff dispenser and flare dispenser. Let's map those first. So chaff, stick, and there's a big red button at the top of the st my stick, so I'm gonna map it to that. So double click, press the button, okay. And then for the flares down here, stick, double click, and there is a uh, black button in the uh, lower right. I'll click on that and set that to my flares. Now we have our force trim switch, which what I use uh, is almost like a target management switch you'll find in the Viper uh, near the center of the stick, and that's what I'm gonna use in that uh, we can go right on it to go to altitude hold, which will come a little bit later. We can go left to go to attitude hold, or we can go to up to uh, uh, force trim release. So let's model those. So we'll go right, stick, push it to the right, and go attitude left, button here, Push the button to the left and up for force trim, double select, push the switch up, and now that's mapped. Uh, then we have our radios, which I'm really not doing right now. And then we have our symbology. And this is the uh, HDU symbology. So if you go up, it'll toggle between transition and cruise, or if you go down or aft, it will uh, toggle between hover and bob up. You can also do depress as well. So let's model those. So first depress, stick. What I'm doing is there's a kind of China hat looking hat in the uh, top right of the stick and that's what I'm gonna be mapping this to. So double click, depress. Now they go down, select, move the switch down, up, move the switch up. Next, we have our weapon action switch, or our WAS switch. And the three that we're interested in is up for gun, right for Hellfire missiles, I'm sorry, yeah, right for Hellfire missiles, and left for rockets. So let's do gun first, so it's on the stick. And what I'm doing here is uh, kind of midway down on the left side, where you would have the uh, CMS switch on the Viper stick, is where I'm going to be placing this. So double press forward, assign gun, right for missile, double select, push right, and rockets, double click, and push left. Now those are assigned. Uh, also on the switch has a, a Z axis, so I'm gonna make this my trigger guard, open close. So it'll toggle it off and on. So double click and Z axis depress on that switch. Uh, last, we have our uh, weapon trigger, first and second detent. Now, if you have a two detent trigger, this is what you do. For a second detent first, so go stick, double click, and go detent one, then detent two, and release. Then go to the first detent, double click, and click just the first detent and release. So now both the first and second detents are mapped. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the George functions. So go to George AI Helper. Here are the 
species. So you're in the pilot seat. Um, there's the option to give George permission to attack. And there's two modes he can be in. There's either a manual mode, which you actually have to give him an order to attack. It's not like you know pulling a trigger or a button. It's actually verbally giving him the order to say, go ahead and launch that missile. And then there's automatic, where you're basically giving him free rain, rain uh, to rain hell. So the consent to fire, uh, which you can assign to a button, is basically telling him uh, to go ahead and engage that target that you've assigned. So to do that, we'll go consent to fire. And there's a um, kind of a wheel button on the front of my stick. There's a depress function. I'm going to assign it to that. Double click on the box, depress, and assigned. And then, of course, there are the in, uh, interfaces, which you'll see uh, either on the right or left side, or sometimes both. And you can display or hide that. So I'm going to assign that to the four-way hat switch that I had earlier assigned up, down, left, and right interface commands to on the four-way hat switch on the throttle. So George, interface, you'll hide, throttle, and now I'm going to uh, depress that same four-way hat switch. And done. OK, so that's it for setting up the pilot controls. And the thing is, anytime you're in the pilot seat now, these are the controls that all the um, systems would be mapped to, which could be completely different to the controls that you will map the CPG to. You can think of it as two different modals, that if you're in the pilot seat, you have one mode of controls. And if you're in the CPG seat, it can have a completely different set of controls. OK, so let's go back to our modules. I'll go to AH64D CPG. Let's go to our axes commands. Let's clear these out. So the key here is, and you can if you want, but I personally do not map my collective and cyclic controls to the CPG, uh, mainly because you know the chance of you actually having to fly the aircraft are between um, almost none and nil. <laughs> it's uh, much more appropriate to assign your axis commands to the TDAC controls, which you'll see why here in a bit. But again, if you wanted to, you certainly can. Uh, it's just it really wouldn't be used that often. So let's go through these. So like collective, pitch. Again, I'm not going to touch those when I'm in the CPG station. We have our HOCAS, which we do, because we're definitely going to be using the cursor on the MPDs. So I'm going to actually do exactly what I did before. So X and Y axes to the mini stick on my stick. So X axes, double click, left and right, OK. Y axes, double click, up and down, sign. And I'm going to quickly do the axis tune, dead zone of two, curve of eight. And again, y axis, so I'm going to invert that one. Then back up to x, axis tune, two, eight, and OK. Our levers we don't need. Uh, next. We have our right hand grip manual track controller. So this is what we're going to be doing or using to slew the TADs. Again, a very important one. So for this, I'm going to assign it to the mini stick on my throttle. So X axes, throttle column, double click, left and right on the controller, OK. Y axes, up and down, OK. Axes tune for the Y. Invert, dead zone, curve, done. And x axis, x axis tune, two, eight, OK. And just like I did with the pilot, I like to have the zoom uh, function. So I'll assign zoom again to the uh, flap lever on my throttle right here. OK, 
And again, I believe this is a invert situation. Okay, next, let's take a look at the left hand grip. As before, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the old assignments out. Okay, so we see uh, LHG, that's left hand grip. Let's go through, again, what I consider at least the most important ones. ITR, I, IAT will come a little bit later. So linear uh, motion compensation or LMC, uh, that's a really handy one for moving targets or stabilizing uh, your TADs. I definitely want to put that one on the throttle. And I'm going to put it as a depress on the same four-way hat switch that I'm going to also set for my field of view. So throttle, depress that switch, and OK. Uh, right below that, we have our store button. So as you may recall, what we can do is using the tabs, we can uh, laser target and hit the store button uh, to save a target location uh, that we can then also send over to our pilot. So I'm going to uh, set that as a single push button on the right lower side of my throttle. So double click, press that button, and assigned. Uh, coming down, now we have our field of view for medium, narrow, wide, and zoom. And again, I'm going to assign that to the four-way hat switch that I just assigned the LMC to as well. So let's start with wide to the right, medium down, narrow to the left, and zoom up. And this pretty much mirrors what's on the real uh, controller as well. Uh, below that, we have the uh, two TADS cameras, either FLIR or TV. Uh, DVO is uh, no, no longer operational in this version of the Apache that we are simulating. And what I did is I assigned those to uh, two of the green buttons on the base of the throttle. So FLIR, throttle, assign that to button B3. TV to B6. And just like the uh, side click for the pilot, we also have a WAS switch on the left hand grip for the CPG. And it's going to be using the, actually the same uh, uh, hat on my side click to control it. So gun, stick, up, missile, to the right, and rocket to the left. And finally, we have the uh, weapon trigger. And just like before, we can set the second and first detents. So we'll do the second one first, of course. Select first, second, release. Then for the first detent, first, and OK. OK, so the left hand grip is now set up. OK, now let's go to the uh, right hand grip. Clear these out. OK. So uh, first, we have our right hand grip enter button. So kind of like we talked about before, where we can use the uh, cursor on the MPDs to select items. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, set that to the mini stick on my stick as a depress. So stick, depress, OK. Clear polarity, same thing on the uh, throttle. I'm going to assign it to that depress on that uh, two-way trigger or uh, button. We have our laser rangefinder designator trigger, first and second detent. Um, honestly, most of the time, you just really need the second. And unless you have um, you know, more controls than I do, a second detent is more than enough. And that's what I'm going to model here. So on the throttle. I have a, a four-way hat switch uh, near the center on the right side. I'm going to assign it to that. So double click, depress, and OK. Our manual tracker we already set as in axes. Uh, then uh, same switch I just sent, the LRFD. I'm going to assign my site select for either HMD or TADS. FCR, of course, will come later. So HMD, throttle, and up 
on the four way, and then tads, right. A slate button, which we talked about uh, again in earlier videos, where you can select an acquisition source and then hit the slate button and then automatically bring your sensors to that location. And I'm going to use a uh, button on the right side back of my throttle. So double select, press that button, and OK. Uh, last, let's go to our George commands. There's just one here, and that is displaying the interface again. So I'm going to uh, bind it to the same four-way hat switch I did as the pilot. So if you press on that four-way hat switch on the throttle, and good to go. Hit OK, and that's it. So again, I know that seems like a lot, but honestly, if I wasn't talking through the whole thing, I could probably do that in literally like five minutes. Uh, there's a lot more detail if you really wanted to, you could uh, put into your mappings. But those are kind of the basics and certainly uh, more than enough to get you started. Anyhow, folks, I very much hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks. <clears throat> Pois é, pessoal, só baseado nesse, nesse vídeo aqui, você <risos> vai ter de ter uns 3, 4 controles e mais 3 teclados. <risos> Rapaz, meia hora só para mostrar alguns controles. Nossa senhora, é muito controle. É muito controle, meia hora só para mostrar isso. Nossa senhora. É, pela velocidade que ele está colocando o vídeo aqui, eu acredito que vão lançar ele antes do final do mês, né? Vamos ver, né? Vamos esperar, né? DCS World H64D, pessoal. Matt Egner trabalhando no sábado. Postou mais um vídeo agora sobre controles do H64. A única coisa que deu para ter certeza aqui... É, primeiro que o vídeo dele, ele veio sem legenda, então ele, ele não configurou isso, então desculpa aí. Mas baseado no que ele mostrou ali, vocês vão ter de ter vários controles, não tem jeito não. Isso já era previsto, o helicóptero, se você for olhar os controles originais dele, que não falta lá é botão. <risos> Desce essa hoje, ah, H64D, naquela esqueminha pessoal, não esqueça de compartilhar o vídeo e se possível dê um joinha aí. Mas se você compartilhar o vídeo e dar um joinha, o vídeo vai ser disseminado. Valeu, fui!